We are building the 47% Pitch Special. Stick around. I hope you guys stick around because at the end, I'm going to share with you some of the cool tips or handy things that I found during this build that may help you. And here we go. This starts the build of the 47% EMHW pits. So one of the first things that I do is I take all the information out of the German instruction book and I put it over into just a regular web browser or translator so I can use the broken English to kind of decipher what's going on. Some of the tools that I found to be helpful at the beginning of the start, weights, obviously sanding bars, 3D printed sander, T-pins, and my good old shaver, and also a angle cutter. You're gonna get out your block of wood. They have everything bagged. So this is for the uh, rudder surfaces. This is for the tail. So this is all the wood that we're going to need in this bag is broken out. I've gone ahead and gotten out the tail piece. This, all we're gonna do is just start to break that out of this CNC kind of template here, just like that. Trying not to actually break the tail itself. And then we will go ahead and sand those off. So um, why don't we start time-lapsing through this stuff and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, once you have everything popped out of the templates, I found the easiest thing to use to get those out, by the way, would be a hacksaw blade. Um, just go ahead and sand off all the rough edges. I lay them out on the plans. It's not super necessary that you do that at this point because all you're doing is basically overlaying um, the patterns that you already have from those templates that are snapped out. But I will use my L brackets. I position those and kind of pin them down to my building surface. And I am working on the aft part of the vertical at this point. So those two six by 12 sticks that I'm gluing into place there, those are the actual hardened balsa wood. So you wanna make sure you use the hardwood there. And then you'll see that I just slid two shims underneath and that's to keep everything flat because you have a six by 12 that you used on the aft portion of the vertical. We're gonna go ahead and take a little bit of weight and we're going to start to pin that down and i will also start to use a little bit of uh, some squeezy clamps here and that's just to keep everything straight and lined up the wood is a little twisted not much but that way it keeps everything nice and in line Now we're gonna go ahead and start to position your six by six. Um, these are soft balls, so these are easy to do because all you're doing is making them the length of that horizontal bar. Um, make sure you cut them a little bit long because you're gonna sand these to the contour of the leading edge of that vertical. So don't, don't cut them short in squares. Make sure they actually stick past a little bit. Now we're gonna to start to position our rudder assembly and we're going to do the leading edge of our rudder. Now these six by 12s that you're putting on here are going to be the soft balsa. Again, make sure everything is just a little bit long. They give you plenty of wood. So make sure that you got nice glue on there, the soft balsa, make them long because you're also gonna sand everything there to the contour of the rudder. And again, you can see I used the shim on the other side just to keep everything level. Now I'm using tight bond at two glue here and I have a friend at the club, he, he builds lots of kit planes. He loves his tight bond, it works really well. Um, I've had no issues with it, it starts to set up pretty quick, but this is a build that I feel is best to take slow. Uh, in CA, when you use CA, is very hard to sand as well as epoxy. So now everything should be dry. We're gonna go ahead and pull it all apart. We're gonna flip it over. Trimming off just a little bit of that excess right there. And we're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna repeat those horizontal sticks on the rudder and the vertical and glue them into place. Again, the plans aren't super necessary at this point. Thank you. 
You shouldn't need shims at this point because you already have your sticks the whole way across on the other side. Now you'll see here that I'm starting to fill in that fillet area where the rudder control horns are going to go. Don't do this. This is a mistake that I made. Um, I will allude to it here shortly, but there is actually a heavy duty ply template somewhere. Go find it. It's in the box. You actually have pieces that'll go in there. That'll make that cleaner. I later had to, had to grind those pieces out. Now, this becomes the fun stuff. So now you're gonna take all of those balsa strips that go all the way around. I wet them, make sure that they're, they're good and soaked and let them sit for a while. Um, there's two different ways that I actually tried to do this. This was the first. So after I wet it, I actually glued everything right at the same time. And it actually helps that glue to really soak in. It made uh, the strips very pliable, but it took a long time to dry. That's the only downfall of this method. So I just start to rough shape everything. Make sure you don't line up all the seams on those strips. Make sure that they're spaced out really, really well. So that way you can have strength all through that um, contoured leading edge of that vertical assembly. And there's a total of four, so you just keep working them in. You do wanna make sure that your vertical surface is pinned really, really well to um, your work table because you don't want that thing moving around. There has to be a good amount of pressure on those sticks in order to, those strips, in order to be held into place. I'm just using weights for now just to kind of rough hold everything in its position but I will go back through with the L brackets and clamps and make sure that everything is squeezed. Now I let this dry overnight. One of the important parts here to this task is to make sure that the template of the vertical and the rudder is going to be centered on those strips that you're putting in there. And whether you eyeball it or whatever, all your horizontal six by sixes should more or less be flush with those strips. If not, you're gonna wind up with an offset leading edge that's gonna be very difficult to sand. And sand evenly. All right guys, so this is gonna set here and fully cure overnight. Those little plates I get from Micromark, they work really well in drywall or the Homosote just to hold pressure in there and you can clamp on them and around things. If I remember, I'll throw the link down in the description below. So some of the key things in here, obviously you're gonna have to wet that stripping as it goes around in order to be able to flex it, be patient, let it kind of soak for a little bit, not real long, but the goal is don't try and bend it right away. Let it sit around for a few minutes. And then also use spacers under this stuff so that way um, this part as it dries to that stripping that you made like almost in a plywood fashion that it actually sits against there and it doesn't make it cattywampus. But anyway, we're going to let this fully cure overnight. Um, now we're going to do the horizontal and elevators. So you're going to get your two plywood sheets like this. Each one comes with a horizontal and the elevator. They're kind of match, but really not really. If you get them mixed up, it doesn't matter. We're going to pop those out of there. And just like we did on the vertical and the rudder, we're going to go ahead and lay out our pieces over our wax paper. And then we are going to use the hardened six by 12s. That would be the trailing edge of our horizontal. And then you're going to use the softer balsa wood for the leading edge of our elevators like this. And then we will use our six by six to create our ribs. And then you can see here off of the plans, we're going to have to wrap those four layers of stripping all the way around like we did our other one. So um, let's get to it. All right, guys, so you start off by snapping these out of the templates. Uh, not a big deal. Again, I found the best thing to use over time is definitely just a regular hacksaw blade. Run that thing in there and then it makes them easy to cut out.
Now we just kind of lay them over um, our blueprints. We are using a parchment paper, wax paper also works over the top. So as you start to glue things together, they uh, do not stick to the paper of the plans. Again, the six by 12 hardened go on the trailing edge of the horizontals and the soft balsa goes on the leading edge of the elevators. And that's what we're starting with here. It's just getting those six by sixes done. Again, when you go to uh, glue these in place, make sure you have shims underneath those pieces so that way they're nice and flat and level when those main supports are glued into place. Add a little bit of weight here to get everything pushed down. And let it dry overnight. Now that that's done, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the elevator portions. This is the six by 12 soft balsa. I have a little chop saw there. That thing is also for Micromark. Micromark is good for stuff from the hobbyist point of view. It's not big and cumbersome. It works great on balsa and it's not super expensive. Stuff don't take up a lot of room. So here it's just like what we did on the horizontals, uh, except it's on the elevators. Make those pieces a little bit long so they overhang the cutout pieces. We can sand those down later. Again, I just do a little bit each night and then go ahead and let that stuff dry. Come back to it the next day. Now we go ahead and we're chopping all of our six by sixes. And again, you really don't need the plans for this if you don't want to use it. Cut them a little long, get them all into place. I just do one side at a time and we'll let those dry for a period of time and flip it over and then get the other side done. One of the things that I did like about this kit is they give you more than enough balsa. In case you make a mistake, uh, you do have an extra piece or two. Please note here what I'm doing is any of the glue residue left from those big 6x12s, uh, I get that out of the way so the 6x6 is butt wood to wood. I don't want any of that glue causing gapping. And that's what we did there with the Dremel tool. Definitely use weights to keep the pressure on those. You will notice the templates. Um, they do have some bows to them, some imperfections. So if you just put glue on those sticks and just rest them there, they are not going to adhere correctly. And as you just saw in that little caption, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. It's always appreciated. So I got a good friend of mine um, who has issues breathing and he attributes it to balsa dust. Uh, building models over a lot of years. So this is an N95. Pick it up at the Harbor Freight store. It's a non-medical version. Keep that balsa dust as you shave out of your lungs. Now, while all of those pieces over there are drying, we're going to go back to reshaping our vertical and our rudder. So let's do it. So one of the things that I found here would be handy, obviously you can start with some rougher 200 or 250 grit sandpaper as you're doing this. Um, the longer your sanding bar, believe it or not, will be a lot easier because you could take off more material at a time. So uh, I allude at the end of this to some tips and tricks. One of them is longboard sanders. Uh, you can pick those up on eBay. They actually turned out towards the end to work really, really well to round these edges. And then we go to 400 grit and 600 grit sandpaper as we round them. All right, so um, official first mistake. These pieces on the, which would be the horizontal stabs, that's the bottom side. I use the six by six there. That shouldn't be, that should be these thicker ones like this. So the option is I can just trim those off, sand it down, and put that piece back in there. Or I could just simply glue in a doubler just like that. My option is, is I got plenty of wood here. I'm just going to trim those off, sand them down, and I'll put the right pieces in there. Otherwise, my OCD will get me and I'll lose sleep.
<laughs> okay guys, so now the screw up is fixed. Again, I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm getting rid of those little glue, excess glue runs. So that way I can glue my six by sixes right to those six by twelves and I don't have any glue getting in the way that would impede that. My little chop saw from Micromark at it again, makes quick work of this stuff and it's easy to move around, simple. Now we're going to get those 6x12s put in there exactly like they're supposed to be. Again, you can just simply follow the outline. You really don't even need plans for a lot of this stuff. All you're doing is overlaying the big templates that you've already, they've already CNC'd um, that you just popped out of the mold. We're using type on wood glue here, type on two. Works really, really well. Super strong. And it makes it easy to sand. Uh, using thin CA, although that things will go together much quicker, is miserable to sand. I hate it. Here's one of the interesting things that I found if you use bars. Um, it was actually nice to create an even pressure over multiple ribs all at one time. So it's kind of what I used, levels, bars, whatever I could find. Good pressure. Time to take all that stuff apart. Next day, yeah, like how that turns out. Looks good. We're going to sand all those off to the contour of our template. Finish the other side. It's like Groundhog Day. You know what they say, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So that's what we're going to do here during this build. We do a little bit each day. So far, even though that I'm editing this video, I have about one and a half wing panels done. And you have to start with the lower. So, so far we have one and a half lowers completed. All right, guys, so uh, first things first. In the kit, we have some extra, some extra of these. So that's their six by 12, and there's a couple extra runners, a six by six. What does that mean? Um, I like that, just to have one or two extra pieces in case, in case you mess something up. Uh, a lot of kits, they give you down to the inch, man, just enough to, to get it done. I like a little bit extra. They're not going bankrupt there, and it gives us room for mistakes. Now, what I did here and some lessons that I'm already learning along the way with this kit. Uh, we have our horizontals and our elevators done. You'll notice what I did here with the wood. We staggered the steps, and the reason for that is as we come around, we're going to have to join the extra stripping that we have in this elevator somewhere along the way. I am not sure that if I cut that off, I would have enough here in a half piece to go all the way around. So with that being said, I mean, we would be at least to there. Yeah, we're going to be nowhere close. So... What I did here, instead of what I did with the verticals, is I laid this out dry, went to work for the day, because this bends over the horizontals pretty easily. So I just bent it there and I just left it for the day to kind of shape the wood. Uh, that gives me something to start working with. What I'm gonna do now, again with those steps, is I'm gonna take these pieces, we're gonna wet them, and I'm not going to glue them together yet. I want to shape them pretty close because this is going to be a pretty good bend all the way around here. And then the extra pieces that I got are going to be enough with those steps that I have room to glue in another, another set of steps joining in the backside so I can finish this run. Um, 
and I'm gonna let it dry to shape and then I'm gonna sand it and put it back in the jig so it's a little bit more sturdy, if you will. And then I'll tell you guys what my thoughts are with the two. Um, also, when you go to tack this piece down to your building surface, make sure you're tacking it somewhere where there's support. If you go to tack right here in between those supports, you're gonna press that piece down too much and what's going to happen is you're not going to be gluing the outside leading edge in the right area. So uh, as we go to do this, we're going to use some uh, weight to hold that down on my building bench. So that way this piece turns out. The rudder turned out really good and I think uh, I'm happy with it. So there's just things we can learn along the way to make the build better. All right. So um, let's go ahead and cut through the time lapse. We're going to go ahead and do that. We're gonna wet our pieces and uh, we're gonna kind of shape them so they have time to dry. Now one of the things that you can't really see here is I'm using uh, little junk pieces of wood uh, between the outside leading edge strips and the clamp. So that way as the clamp squeezes it doesn't indent that leading edge work. All right, so we have our leading and trailing edge, the four ply of these strips laid out all the way around. So I do like this method with just wet and shape first. Um, and again, if you're an avid builder, maybe you're like, oh, dummy, maybe uh, you didn't know it's always this way. I don't know. But anyway, I'm learning as I go here. So wet it shape it once this dries that ought to be pretty easy then for me to just go through glue the strips and lay them right back where they came from and again i got three extra strips here basically one and two halves if you want because some of them did crack along the way but and then ultimately i cut these little six by twelve blocks and I use them for spacers, and these are just little uh, clamps from Harbor Freight, and very in, uh, inexpensive. So pieces are held down, everything's wet, everything's shaping up here, which looks good. We're going to let this dry, and uh, tomorrow we'll take it all back off and hopefully have time to glue it. So catch you then. Now one of the things that I did right there is I'm actually using a fabric marker uh, so that way it leaves a, a good mark on the wood for you. Sharpie I guess would work just fine as well. I found the fabric markers don't dry out but I made they're basically witness lines so everything is lined up exactly where it's supposed to with its mating pieces when it goes back together. Now we're just applying a liberal amount of the tight bond and again don't line up all those strips. You don't want them perfectly lined up. You want to make sure that they're stepped. And then we'll put all our witness marks back together and reclamp it.
All right. In this step, what we're going to do is mimic, if you guys can see right there in the drawing, that's our hinge line. We have to round everything, leading edge, uh, trailing edge of the horizontal and of the elevator. So one of the things that I wanted to do first is I made sure that everything is um, nice and straight along there so that way the parts mate nicely. And now we're going to go ahead and start to sand and round those edges. All right, guys, I varied from the plans for this section a little bit. Um, hinging the horizontals and the elevators. I'm opting to go away from the nylon steel pin hinges. I'm not a big fan of this sharp thing on the inside. They'll work just fine. I know they will. But <clears throat> what I'm going to go with is Robart style hinges. I use those in all of my big planes. They work out really well. I have absolutely no issues with them. I'm going to use a total of four. And basically I spaced them in the middle of those ribs and you can see that I also added in blocks and hardened them on the back side. Those are all epoxied in so that way I still have strength throughout all of those portions and I just like using the Robarts. So what do you need to do the Robarts if you order them? They typically come with this jig, self-centering jig. You just take it, squeeze it, lay it over your spot. Now what I've done is I've just cut some little backer pieces. Uh, this will allow the hinges to have more wood to adhere to. And I'll use Gorilla Foaming Glue here. So that way it'll encapsulate between the wood and the Robard hinge. So that way any of those barbs get filled in with Gorilla Glue and they can't pull out. I've had stuff for 25 years and it's been golden. Here I'm just making some marks. Make sure that way all your robard hinges line up. You don't want to have them at an angle. Now this is one of the neatest tricks that I discovered during this build process. Once you drill one set of holes in a surface, put them in through the back side and use pressure to indent the other mating components. So here I drilled holes in the vertical. I pushed the robarts from the wrong side so they left an indent exactly where I needed uh, things to be lined up and now I know exactly where to drill. And I just highlight them with the marker so it's easier to see. All right, guys, I'm going to have to edit this back in, but I just realized I made a fupa. There's something that I did that I haven't been feeling great about. I kept digging, 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 and finally I'm like, yeah, you know what? It's probably not right. Um, initially, the kit in the bag of parts did not come with these pieces, which if you look at the plans for the rudder and the elevator are where the control horns go. And I made them out of a softer balsa and you could wick that with ca to strengthen it up and i'm pretty sure i could leave it just like that if i wicked it with ca the problem is that the strongest part of that whole thing has to pull and tug and i don't know how it's going to hold up on a big plane like this so i've been bothered by the fact that it didn't come in the plans or in the kit and there's nothing noted on the plans but looking through all the pictures i finally realized they do and it did come with it it's in the balsa uh, ply cut sheets. 
So these pieces right here, you have two for rudder and four more that look the same for elevators. But again, they don't note it on the plans anywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to grind that out with a Dremel tool, just like I did here in the rudder, not a big deal. And then we will push epoxy those into place and then use just a little bit of wood filler or something in there um, if still need be to seal those up. So anyway, uh, not a big deal, small setback, but if you want to, one of those first steps should be to glue this right on that framework before you ever put this tracking around the outside. It'll make your life easier. All right, guys, here we go. So we got all of our uh, fillets fixed and in place now. Now we're going to go ahead and do this tube. So there's a couple things here. Number one, it's pretty simple. They do tell you four centimeters and uh, we're gonna cut those off, trying to cut them pretty square and straight. We're gonna go ahead and rough them up with sandpaper. We're gonna glue them into those spots, but we have to open them up. You could see I've already opened those up there I have to do that and there's not a whole lot of room left on the sides of this material so um, you want to be careful I just use my Dremel tool there and a little sanding disc to get in there I make them just a hair bigger so I have room to tilt this and the reason being is because we're going to connect this in there this in there we're going to put the bar in there um, the main spar and we're going to put weight on these so they're going to be flat based on my building surface and level that way they're not twisted this way this way whatever now i've really tried to look at this thing needs to be cut as well and they don't really tell you how long this should be i've tried looking in the plans i've looked at the templates of the pieces of the fuselage and it appears to me like if you keep these on the plans that this would be the way they are in the fuselage. That's the spacing. So that would mean that spar needs to be that big. This spar would need to be this big. So what I've done is I've compromised what's left. And that's where I'm going to wind up cutting this tube. And um, I'm going to assume that's correct. And you know what the word assume means if you break it down. If not, Google it. Otherwise, um, let's go ahead and get those two areas drilled out and um, we'll get our tubes cut, roughed up, we'll overnight epoxy those into place so it's a slow uh, slow cure. And uh, the only thing left then would be to cut in our spots for our control horns. So anyway, um, let's get to work. Now, one of the things that I found to cut this support tube that works really, really well is a tubing cutter. That's a regular automotive tubing cutter. I'm sure you can get one just like it, um, maybe at a hardware store in the plumbing section. Now I'm using slow cure epoxy to put in the tubes. Make sure you rough up those tubes with sandpaper and get a nice liberal coat on those things on the inside and the outside. There really isn't a whole lot of wood 
to hold those things in except for the bond on the side. It makes me a little leery, but it seems pretty strong the way it is. The, the important part here, or the key part to this, is make sure that everything cures as an assembly, nice, flat, and level. So after everything is put together, while that epoxy is only starting to cure, I place levels on there and let it sit overnight. Now it's nice and flat. All right, guys, we're finally done with the tail sections. Check this out. So here you can see, move a couple things out of the way. Here you can see we got the tail all finished up. Everything is nice and free with our Robard hinges. For the most part, everything is 90% sanded down. The only thing we haven't done yet is cut our slits into that ply now that we fix those fillets and we use the right pieces in there. I didn't cut those in yet. I'm going to wait towards the end when I cut all of the um, horns out of the plate because the rudder will need done also. But everything here is completed. Looks pretty good. Very happy with the way everything turned out. I like it. Kind of starts to give you a little bit of a perspective of how big this pits is going to be. You want tips? We got tips. Let me share with you some of the things that I found during this build that'll be helpful for you. And here we go. Lots of tips. Let's start off with things to help you do your sheeting. Uh, a lot of people like to use lead shot in a, in a bag or diver's weights or workout weights, things like that. I use good old fashioned bean bags position them on there like so. Uh, lead weights, you can pick these up at like uh, hobby flea markets, things like that. Usually you'll find somebody making and selling those, but that way this conforms. You can add extra weight if you need to in any of those certain areas. So that works really well. Wood glue, you're going to need a lot of it. Get big bottles. For application purposes, you can get one of these kind of angled syringes. Uh, get those off of Amazon or craft stores. These also work really well for putting the right amount of glue in a small spot. But in order to help smear that around, I was using acid brushes and going through a lot of them. They actually sell little silicone brushes like this that you can wash off afterwards. You'll save yourself a good bit of money if you get yourself one of those. Um, next thing, files from Harbor Freight. Got a whole pack for like $5. Round files, square files, triangle files, flat files. Those things work great on balsa wood and they're very, very cheap. Uh, epoxy. So I'm a big high sole user. I love high sole. It is kind of pricey. And a lot of you have recommended from West Systems the 610 uh, epoxy. It is a slow cure. So on the important stuff, it works great. But like I said, you guys have commented in uh, the comments for a big project like this. That works much better. From Micromark, you guys can pick up lots of machinist squares, small, medium, large. Lots of them come in handy. Clips from Harbor Freight, you need small ones, you need bigger ones, you need even bigger ones. Uh, I got a little hacksaw, a little mini thing from Lowe's. It's a little cobalt one, that works really well. And then we have this little miter box to put on the end of the bench to make perfect square cuts or 45 cuts. Simple stuff for pieces like on top of the ribs. Uh, that thing works really, really well. I have myself a 3D printed sander. That works well in tight spots. And then you have these. I picked these up from eBay. These are long board uh, sanders. They're made out of like an MDF board or something like that. It's like a soft wood that somebody makes. Um, it's got a hardened bottom. And then you can get some of the self-adhesive sandpaper strips to put on there. You can get them in custom lengths. These things work awesome. I got myself several of these for not much money. So this one I've beat up. I've been playing around with that one a little bit, but still works good. Um, obviously dust masks. You don't want to be sucking in all that balsa dust, so make sure you got yourself a dust mask. And one of the last things is a fan. You need a fan with a filter on the back. So this is just a box fan. Use the filter to help suck all the dust out of here. So that way it is not lingering around and landing on your planes and projects. That fan and the filter works really, really well. Um, one of the last cool things right here, your balsa dust. Uh, save all that stuff. You can mix that with your glue. That makes awesome wood putty. So I keep all that stuff around. Um, got a little clip in there. Looks like bouncing around. But anyway, yeah, save that stuff. So um, hope all those things will help you on your next balsa build. Well... Everybody, that wraps up this portion of the build on the EMHW 47% Pit Special. 
thanks for joining me. I hope uh, I hope this helps you if you're building one of these or maybe it entices you guys to dive into a wood kit also. So it is Brendan here at Just Playing Crazy. You're just playing crazy for always hanging out and watching. Do me a favor, smash that like button. It helps us out a lot. Subscribe and ding that bell notification and set it to always so you're always made aware of our cool content. Don't forget to check us out on the official Facebook and Instagram Just Playing Crazy pages. With that being said, um, links down in the description below where I pick this stuff up. But I wish you guys happy flights. Peace out.